Oh, the Audible. What a day today. The Miami Dolphins come away with another win, back-to-back wins over two teams who are kind of bullying people around the National Football League, the Pittsburgh Steelers, then the Buffalo Bills. The Miami Dolphins come away with a 28-25 win. Kim Bocamper here, John Congemi with you. Uh, for Throughout the program, you can go ahead and check us out on, on Twitter. You can send your questions via Twitter. Just hashtag the Audible. You can see us on the Miami Dolphins Facebook page on a delayed basis and on MiamiDolphins.com. So get your questions in. Keep them running. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about. And, John, I'll tell you what, I felt great last week after the <laughs> Pittsburgh win. And you know what? And everyone's going, hey, can they do it again? Can they do it again? I said, man, you're asking a lot. You had a guy rush for 204 yards, and you asked him to do it again. And in fact, I talked to uh, Jay Ajay in the middle of the week. We did an interview for Dolphins Weekly, and I said, Jay, you think you can back it up with another? He goes, why not? And He's sure enough, he did. 212 yards, and who would have thought that against a Buffalo Bill team, Rex Ryan team, that you knew was going to come in, throw blitzes at you, do a lot of different things, and you knew they expected the and, and, and you they came in expecting the Dolphins to do just what they did, try to pound the rock, run the football with a Jai being the guy, and there wasn't a damn thing they could do about it. It's been fun to be a Dolphins fan yep. over the last two weeks, just the way that they've been able to dominate the line of scrimmage. And I think that all goes back to having those five guys – uh, for the second week in a row yep. on the offensive line, providing holes, providing creases. And then what can you say about Jay Ajayi, the way he's run the football yep. uh, behind uh, an offensive line, but he's getting so many yards after first yep. contact. You know, this is a guy that's going downhill at a high rate of speed. And by the end of the third quarter, beginning of the fourth yep. quarter, some of those defensive backs, they don't want to tackle Jay. Yeah, yeah. And they're, he's wearing on teams. Yeah. And it, it's been fun to watch. I've played against guys like that before. I remember playing against Earl Campbell. And I'm not I'm not putting Jay, although he's in the same he's, he's in there Historically, for, for he's, in, this, he's in that right. same spot Forever. as him. But I've played against those guys like that where they do. Every time you hit them, you know it is going to be a collision. Right. And then you get in there late in the game, and all of a sudden now you start kind of dipping your head down in your shoulder pads because you know it's coming, and you see it out there with, with J.H.I. But the one thing you talked about, John, that I really like to see from him, there's no dancing around. He sees a crease, and really I, I think he's even – I think his confidence in this offensive line is even if he doesn't see a crease when he gets the ball in his hands – He's going to go there because he knows they're going to create some space for him, and he takes it so hard and so direct that he gets into that second level, and that's where the trouble begins because he'll run those guys over in the drop of a hat. And it really has been, you know, to me, his running has energized this energized this insti- entire football team, offense and defense, in, in the way they've been playing the last two weeks. It's contagious. Yep. It's contagious what he's doing with the football, the, the style of running. And I think to your point, Bo, He's pressing the holes. He's not giving up on, yeah. on anything. You know, if if something's not there, he's staying on track to where he finds a crease and he's a one cut runner. Yeah. I and mean, he's gonna take that one cut and he's going downhill. And the thing that I didn't think Jay had was the elusiveness yeah. that he's shown in the second yeah. level, where he was hopping over a would be yeah. Foot, you know, a, a grab at the and, ankle and, and, and getting not, more yards. Forget, I, I didn't, you know, the, the speed that he's displayed at yeah. times too uh, is because I knew he's a fast guy. But I mean, he, you know, he's you. You better run. You better put your your track shoes on if you're going right. to catch up with him. If he's got a little bit of a step on you, and he's that kind of guy, which I think has been been really good to see. John, let's take a look at some of the numbers uh, in, in the game, and, and I think they're pretty startling for the Miami Dolphins. The one that jumped out to me when I first looked at it after the game was total first downs, 26 first downs by the Dolphins. And what that tells me, John, they're not they're not getting the big play. They're not getting that huge play, although they're getting some big plays during the course of the game. But this is a grinded-out offense, take it down the field, turn. I mean, there, there, there must have been two or three series where they had at least five first downs before the series ended, whether it was a touchdown, whether it was a field goal, whether they punted. But they're grinding, which, which really wears the defense down, but it shows you that their willingness to continue. And, and I think the patience that Adam Gay showed yesterday with the running game, sticking with the running game, because you know how much he likes to throw the ball around the yard a little bit. Yes, he does. And, and for him to continue to run the ball that way, I think it's it said a lot about his maturity as a head coach and his willingness to let those guys do it. Although he's getting earful from, from Pouncey and that offensive line coming up saying, hey, you better keep you better running keep the ball. Going. Exactly. That's right. You know, I think he's maturing as a play caller and getting to know his football team. Uh, the first couple of weeks, it was hard for him because of the inconsistency yeah. of the offense. But to your point, the Dolphins, there were a couple of drive bow Bo, that I was writing down on my notes. They didn't get to a third down. Yep. It was first yep. down, second down, first yep. down, second down. And yep. then those drives end up resulting in points and taking six, yep. seven, eight minutes off the clock. Yep. Those are demoralizing to an opposing team, especially when they're not on track. Yep. And, and it, the 
Bills had the lead. I mean, 17 to 6, that Miami Dolphin team showed some grit. They showed some, you know, yeah. fire of staying with it and confidence to go back, answer a score with a yeah. score, and then take control well, of the you, game. Well, you look at this. After that, they go down 17 to 6, and then they go they go 10 plays, 75 yards. They throw the two point conversion in there. The one, two, three, five first downs in right. that drive. So they were just grinding the ball down the field, getting the job done. And I like to see that because it certainly takes its toll. And you kind of knew in that game, John, and it was a very pleasant day out there. Mm -hmm. Very unlike the week before against Pittsburgh where it was steamy, humid. it was muggy, it was humid. None of that on Saturday, I mean on Sunday. But you could still see in the fourth quarter that defense was dogged. They, they were tired. They were, they were worn out. They'd been beaten up uh, by this Miami Dolphin football team. And, and, uh, uh, and I think it, it was pretty easy to see out there. It was a fun game to watch yeah. because the Dolphins were the dominant football team. They're used to, or the Dolphin fans are used to seeing the Bills bully the yeah. Dolphins over the past four or five seasons. I mean, it's been, let's not call oh, it no, anything well. else. The Bills have yeah. had the Dolphins number, and they've played well. They've, they've kind of taken the fight out of the Miami yeah. Dolphins. Yesterday was a different story. Completely different. I, I think, and, and this team grew up, they, they kind of know each other a little yeah. bit better over the last two weeks because of the way the offense is not allowing the defense to get exposed for 70 or 80 plays. They're the offense that yeah. are running 70 yeah. plus plays and keeping the defense on the sidelines. And I, you know, being in the locker room today, Bo, you could hear some of the defensive guys talk about it's great to watch the, the, the Dolphins offense and you're sitting back and you yeah. haven't taken the field yet and you see first down, yep. first down, you look at the clock and it's 10 minutes gone, you know, nine minutes yep. left in the quarter and they're still out there. Yep. So that's a that's a confidence builder, I think, for the defensive yeah. side of the ball as well. There's nothing worse than a D, as a defensive player than than coming off the field after stopping somebody, and you look, and the offense goes over, and you look over, and the they're right back. And, and no, and the punter and the long snapper are already warming <laughs> yeah. up. They haven't even run a play. You go, come on, guys. Yeah, give you us know? some, give us and a now, chance. Yeah, now these guys, you know, now they get a chance <laughs> to rest a little bit and keep those guys out of the keep, keep those guys on the, on the bench for a little while. Now we we, we should have questions. Neon Leon, what's up, now? Leon, what's happening with our questions here, man? No, no. You know what? I'm not reconnected here. You give me a bad. I, uh, I, you know, I got Leon, a bad... Leon's been a little lax on, on the. He's been. The he has been absolutely dreadful. Yeah, I, for the last two weeks. I've been getting the reports. You know, I've, I've been I've, looking at the I've, I've, daily reports of the article, you know, and he's, he's been, been checking out. out. He's been. Yeah. Robert 1979. Or you can text. You can text. He's making these. You can up text now, him to me, because evidently our computer is not on online. So if you need to text him, so what's Robert 1969 saying? All right. How long can we sustain playing? We got to do it this way now. Uh, this is. Do the, you have know, the, the, no, the, the, the That's what I was going to say. The okay. next on Wednesday, <laughs> we're just going to bring tin cans in here with a string, and we'll pull them tight. And and, and my man Neon Leon can go ahead and give me the He's information that, that way. Though. I can hear he him. He is. He is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what the heck, you know? You, you know what? It, uh, you get what you pay for. <laughs> and I know we're not paying Leon a whole well, lot of got money. A free so, lunch. Yeah. I had lunch with him today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can they sustain what they've done over the last two weeks? Well, you know, that, that question was first and foremost in my mind after the Pittsburgh game. Then you come back in this game, and it took me about five minutes to say, yes, they can, mm -hmm. because the way A.J. Ajayi came out running the football, what, he had 49 yards in the first quarter yes. alone. And you thought, man, we're 99 right, in the we're, first half. We're, we're right back yeah. to where we were a, a week ago. So you've been able to sustain it for two weeks. And, and John, let me, let me ask you this. And it seems like a very elementary answer to the question of why and how are they doing this? To me, is it is it is it as simple as saying, well, because of those five guys up front, finally got them healthy, finally have them playing together, and that's made the difference. I, I you know, I can't come up with any, you know, to me, Jay Ajay and what he's done in two weeks is a byproduct right. of those of those five guys up front. So to me, I, when I think when I talk about the five guys up front, I just kind of throw Jay in there as part of that parcel. I think it's it's better execution, number yep. one, and I think that Coach Gase is getting used to what these guys do well. I think yep. it was a little bit more of a grab bag in the first three yep. or four weeks on what do we hang our hat on? Are we good at screens? Are we good yep. at bubbles? Are we good at zone inside zone? Are we uh, good at zone read with Ryan keeping the football and running a little bit? What are they good at? And now that you've got the mixture of the five starters up front. I think that playlist has trimmed a little bit. Yeah. Maybe the formations are getting a little yeah. bit more vast, but the basic play calls are trimmed. And yeah. I think that's helping the Miami Dolphins. Plus, 
I think they're playing at a much higher level. Yeah. You know, they're staying on blocks a little bit longer. Yeah. They're hitting the hole a little bit quicker. And, and quite you're, frankly, you're, you're they're see- making plays. And, and you're seeing linemen out at the second level. Yes. You're seeing them out there making those secondary blocks that, that allow uh, the run, uh, allow a guy to get out there and, and get into the deep secondary well, how about and make things Bo, happen. Well, when, when they were backed up, the Dolphins were backed up on their own end, and, and Jay has that big run. Yeah. Uh, Jermon Bushrod seals with Pouncey, and he comes off on the linebacker. Yeah. There was only one linebacker in that defensive yeah. set. He knocked him outside and Jay's off to yep. the races and you know in that scenario the offense is just trying to get one first down yep. well they were able to get 45 50 yards yep. on one play and put themselves and flip the field yep. for their team the other thing John is you know by playing that way all along and you, I think any most people in that building should have should have known what was coming when they're sitting there in that last drive when they throw the touchdown to Kenny Stills and they've got that there everyone's at the line of scrimmage yep. playing the run playing the run and I'm sitting there going, you know, geez, you know, it's a great time for yeah. play action pass, great time. And sure enough, they get it out there. And, and and believe me, that touchdown pass to Kenny Stills was a complete byproduct of what they had been doing, pounding the ball and running it all day long. Well, eye discipline. Everybody's yeah. eyes for the Buffalo Bills yeah. are in the backfield. They're looking at 23 yeah. uh, and trying to stop the run. And as you said, it was a perfect time for that call. And let's credit Kenny Stills. That yeah. ball's a little underthrown. He goes up and gets the football, eludes yeah. a would-be tackler, and then runs into the end zone so there was a lot of individual play yep. that added up you know the scheme uh the way they were pounding yep. the football and actually the execution of it. allowed them to set up that yep. play no doubt hey you're watching the audible here kimbo camber john can with you uh you can watch us on uh, on twitter or you probably are watching us on twitter if i mentioned it to you but you can send your questions via twitter hashtag the audible somehow some way my man leon if he's if he's even awake back you wake back there leon still Okay, Leon's awake, so you can go ahead and get your questions. He'll bring them through to us. You can also see us on the Miami Dolphins Facebook page on a delayed basis, as well as MiamiDolphins.com. All right, here we go. Let's get to uh, some you know, of the questions. I got burgers at lunch will do that to you. Bro. Yeah, man, I, t- I keep trying to tell him. Yeah. Uh, here's one. Uh, I got a menage. Yeah, there you go. All right. Uh, can we uh, wear the throwbacks all the time? Oh, they got I my vote. They got my vote. You got my vote. All day no long. No question about it. Best they, uniform in football. They, they, you know what? They are the best uniform ever in the yes. national football. That's what made me a Dolphin fan. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm sitting in Northern California in 1971, Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, flip on the TV with some buddies of mine. We're watching the Dolphins play the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm going, man, look at those uniforms. Those I became sweet. a Dolphin fan <laughs> at that point. Yeah, they're the best. They no are, doubt. No I'm, I'm with you 100%. It. If we could wear them every week, I, I would uh, I would love it. Another Twitter question. Will Jordan Cameron make it back after the bye? I think it's a pretty good question there. I saw Jordan on the field yesterday, on the sideline yesterday prior to the game or during the game when he had some of, this, uh, some of the guys that weren't playing on the sideline. He was carrying somebody's helmet out there, but uh, – I'm not sure where he's at. I don't think anyone knows. You know, in, in the problem with the problem with Jordan as opposed to Deion Sims, although last year Deion was out for week. the yeah. first week, he was out uh, for a number of weeks with a concussion. But Jordan has had a, mu- a number, multiple numbers of concussions. So I'm sure he's in that deep, deep uh, concussion protocol uh, just with his history. So it'll help. It'll help the Miami yeah. Dolphins in terms of depth because yeah. right now they're they're very thin on special teams. Yeah. And I think that's where you get the trickle down effect. And that's why you saw Sam. Young go into the formation to take some pressure yep. off of some of the tight ends that are asked to play on three or four special yep. teams right now. I got a question. No, I'm going to assume he means Bo Leon. <laughs> Bo, do you remember the hardest running back to tackle? My hardest running back I ever tackled was uh, was um, Earl. Was Earl Campbell? Yeah, yeah by far, by far. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot of hard, a lot of guys that ran hard, but. Uh, Earl Earl brought running hard to a whole different level. And the thing about Earl, the thing was, man, I, I remember when Earl came out of Texas, Glenn Blackwood was with us. Mm-hmm. And Glenn played with Earl at, at the University of Texas. He says, boy, he says, wait, wait do you play against this guy, man. First of all, he's going to run. He's going to run over. He's going to try to run over you. But then when he gets in the open, nobody's going to catch him. <laughs> and I looked at him. I looked at him pregame. I looked at him pregame. I looked down and said, his thighs are right. that big, each one. And I remember going to the locker room after the after pregame over. I said, "Glenn, that guy can't be that fast. His He's legs, his, his thighs are too big. He can't be that fast." Boom! Boom! Yeah. I mean, he was phenomenal, phenomenal. So uh, to answer your question, yeah, no question about it. It was Earl Campbell, uh, King Edlin. Do you think the bye week couldn't have come at a better time? That, that's a pretty interesting question, and I think I asked a couple guys uh, after the game yesterday. I know some other some of the reporters asked uh, Coach Gaze the question. And, you know, you're almost in that situation where you'd like to play another game just right. to keep that momentum going. However, this is a t- football team that's beat up. 
that has those injuries. You talk about Jordan Cameron. You talk about Deion Sims. You talk about all these other guys that, you know, e- even a guy like Jelani Jenkins, who's played the last two weeks, That's right. but he's certainly not 100% out there. You know, I think now's a good time for these guys to get get healthy a little bit. I think so it's, I, I think who it, you ask. I think there's a, to me, there's probably a, the, the bigger advantage is to being healthy and getting ready to come back for the Jets. Yeah, uh, you know, Brandon Albert in, in the locker room today said it's a perfect time for him because yep. all he's going to do is hydrate and sleep, <laughs> you know, for this week and try to rest and, and yep. get going for the New York Jets. But I bet if you ask Adam Gase or or maybe Sean Jefferson, those mm-hmm. guys sometimes, you know, have that superstition of, hey, we've got it rolling right now and we don't want to change yeah. anything that we're doing. I'm, I'm sure Jay Ajayi could use the rest after yep. running for, you know, 200 well, yards you in what, a game. He, you know what, he, he's he's got to be – they got to pack him in ice after these last two <laughs> games. Right. The way he's been going, I mean, he's been beating some people up. But, I, but uh, you know, I, I agree with you. You know, as, as certain people want to keep going, and I think it's a good question for all the fans out there that are asking it because it, it, it makes sense. You want to keep on the roll, or or you want to get healthy. It's kind of six one, half a dozen the other one. Uh, do we have an OB, OBJ case with Landry picking up all these penalties? That's one of the other numbers, John. I wanted to, to look at here that had the Dolphins not won that football wow. game penalties? really would have been probably the, the, the number one question asked. 13 penalties, 116 yards, but a number of the penalties that they had were touchdown killers, drive killers, or allowed... allowed um, first and fives for the other team. Yeah, or allowed them to keep things yeah. going, or first and five, and those types of things. Just some horrible, horrible... Some penalties that, that really were you know really hurt this football team uh that you just can't do them you know i saw where jarvis said well i didn't know that was a penalty spinning the ball at the feet of guys watch a game yeah watch a game i mean they're they're calling everybody for that now if you're not if you're not in front of a player and you spin the ball on the ground no problem but you throw it at his feet and spin it that's a you know that's a taunting call you're going to get it every time yeah every single time and it was in front of the bench it wasn't even on the field to play so i think that's where you get the automatic flag for taunting and and obviously over there they're they're looking at that absolutely if they're on that anytime there's a tackle on the side there's a fire yeah there there could be a brush fire over there or shoving and somebody's going to get called for 15 yards but you're right bo you walk it back to last week against the steelers you know, there were nine penalties for 65 yeah, yards. Yeah. So that is becoming a little bit of a problem. And not just unsportsmanlike or not just taunting, but it's the it's the defensive penalties that keep yes. drives alive or allow you know, the offense to stay on the field. So it's a combination of both. And I think Adam Gase is going to have to walk a fine line. You don't want to take the aggressiveness well, away from certain players, but you still have to address the problem and get it corrected so it yeah. doesn't hurt you in a tight football game. And that's and that's where Jarvis is at. And look, I agree 100%. There, there is not one thing I would want to do to take Jarvis – Jarvis Landry's enthusiasm for playing the game away from. I don't want to take any of that right. intensity away from him, but some way, somehow, he's got to understand the penal nature of these penalties that that that, that he's that. And, and those are penalties that, that there's only one guy. That's you know, right. it's one thing if you're holding the guy. It's one thing if you're fighting to make a play. It's one thing if this or that. But when you're there by yourself and you voluntarily do something that that is going to turn out to be. A 15 yard. What do you have? You know, like in the one catch over in the corner on the on their side, we gained about 35 yards, gave came, 15 came back, back in the penalty, yeah. and the drive fizzled. That's right. Because not only not only do you, is it the 15 yards you give up, but you got a huddle that's that's you know they're they're jumping up and down. They just had a 35 yard play. All of a sudden the ball you know the bomb drops on them. And now you got to go back 15. There's yards. There's nothing more demoralizing than exactly. getting a big play and then seeing your offensive lineman start walking yeah. back towards you saying, "Well, what happened?" Yeah. You know, exactly, that's 15 yards. So you're right; those things have to be cleared up and cleared up in this off in this off week. Because yeah. against the Jets, you play a tight game at home. You want to be able to control yeah. what you can control, and field position has a lot to do yeah. with that. But that's it. You know, six, 13, 116 yards, boy. That that would have been a major, major talking point. Have this football team not come back and beat the Buffalo Bills. Uh, zero fifty eight. Uh, Ronald Edward, do you think we can have the same kind of success running the football against the Jets? You know, to be honest, all I can say right now is I don't see why not. I mean, the way they've run the ball, the way they've run the ball the last two weeks, that works against anybody in the National Football League. If you're that physical at the point of attack, if you've got a running back following these guys that are giving you creases and he's hitting the hole with the authority he's hitting it, I don't care who it is. I don't care who you're playing. You're going to have success running the football with that type of effort and that type of execution. Steelers, uh, a top five defense against the run. The Bills, top five defense against the run. I'm sure the Jets are very 
close, yep. if not in that category. Yep. So you're going to have to have another effort by the Miami Dolphins offensive line where they control the line of scrimmage. Yep. You're going to have to be able to hit the hole with timing. Jay's been able to yep. do that the last two weeks. And you're going to have to be able to play action off of that to get people yep. off the line of scrimmage as a complement to your running game. So and, and, and a lot to, of those things will ha- have to happen. Go to the flip side, the defensive side. You know, Bills came in, they were averaging 166 yards in a game. What, what we're did, rushing the Shady football. Shady had 11 yards? Yeah, same thing with uh, same thing the week before against Pittsburgh. They were very yeah. successful running the football. And, and so, you know, those are two teams that were very – so the defensive line doing is, the same is thing. doing the same thing that the offense is doing in, in their job description. So I think it's uh, – you couldn't ask for the best. And, and look, if the defense keeps playing the way they've been playing against the Jets, I wouldn't expect anything different than we've seen the last two weeks on that side. On that yeah. side of the ball against the Steelers and the uh, and the Buffalo Bills. So well, they only yeah. gave up 67 yards on the ground. The yeah. Dolphins' defense. So there was yeah. one of those things where you know if you contained uh, Tyrod Taylor a little yeah. bit early, yeah. I think those numbers would have been suppressed even further. Yep, yeah. no doubt, no doubt. Um, all right, see where we at here, uh, Bo. Can we finally beat the Jets at home? It's been eight years. Um, Has it been that long? Eight? You mean home here? Yeah. It's been that long since we've been the Jets. Is that the I, case? We have to get Leon. Hey, Leon, on that. get in there, Leon. I, I know you we'll have. We'll be a hard, able to get that. I know by you Friday, don't read so right? well. I know you don't read so well, but get one of those other guys back there to see if he can find out what uh, you know what, what the situation is there. All right. He, he, you know. He's, well, you know, he's a, he's been all over the place. Today. we had to do Dolphins Daily. We, you know, he's got to keep me in check half the day. He had a big lunch, like I said. So. There's a lot of a lot of things on his mind. And I've been very, very disappointed over the yeah, you know, I don't I don't want to I don't things wanna... have been going that poorly with communication uh, 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 around. With him, with well, him, everyone else is great, but Leon, I guess. How's Squatch been? Squatch is always he's always on the he's money, on... you know. He's always there, you know. That's but good. but Leon He's letting uh, his hair grow out a little bit, you see. Well, that? that's because he's got to cover, you know, he's trying to cover some of that excess yeah. weight that he's okay. got in there or whatever. I'm not sure what he's doing there. Yeah. Uh let's go to Hidalgo nine five four. Love the fact that everyone knew we were gonna run the ball and it still worked. I'm with you. Yeah, I know. I'm with you. They they expected you knew you know Rex Ryan going into that game. They're going to run the football. They're going to try to run the football down our throats, and we're not going to let it happen. We're going to be the ones that push them back. And, and look, hey, why not? They done it. They did it uh, two times last year. They did it one of the two games a year before that, and two times a year before that against the Miami Dolphins. So nothing to lead you to believe that they weren't going to be able to do it again this year. But yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's it's great. I, I guarantee you, they worked all week on trying to stop the Dolphins' running game, and, and you see what happened. It was it was nice to see, especially against a team that's coached by Rex Ryan, Rob Ryan, his brother, the defensive coordinator. You know that they were yeah. up all night trying to figure out how the Miami yeah. Dolphins could just bully them at the line of scrimmage and run for over 200 yards against a team that gives you exotic looks, yeah. that, that tries to do things at the line of scrimmage to confuse your blocking schemes, and uh, the Dolphins were able to have every answer to every question that they could pose them. Yep, you are watching the audible here Kimbo Camper John Conjemi send your questions uh, via Twitter at hashtag the audible you can see us on the Miami Dolphins Facebook page on a delayed basis and on MiamiDolphins.com let's continue going with the questions here does Tannehill enjoy having a strong running game well I'd have to you know look knowing Ryan and knowing what this football team means to him Ryan cares about one thing Winning. winning a football game I think if you ran the ball 60 times a game and he didn't throw it one time and you won the game 7 to nothing, he'd be just as happy. You know what? A quarterback sometimes needs a running game to jumpstart what yep. they do. And, and it's a compliment to the defense as well. You can throw it all over the lot. And I think the Dolphins were getting to that point yep. early in the season where they couldn't run the football effectively. They had to use the passing game as a tool to run the football with the quick passes, the yep. bubble screens, and all that. But when you're not consistent throwing the football, that defense gets exposed. So I think it's, it's more of a happy medium. You'd rather lean – towards the running game and have a complimentary passing game yep. where the Dolphins are in the last two football games. Yeah, and, and, and you know John is a quarterback. you got a running game going like that. It certainly opens up the field for you to do a lot of different things well, and down Bo, the field. you limit the possessions the opposing team yep. has. Just look at you know that first quarter. I think, what, six minutes were left to go in the, in the first quarter, seven yep. minutes. The Bills hadn't even been on the yep. field yet. So that's demoralizing to a football team, knowing that your chances yep. of scoring offensively have been taken away by – dominating the time of possession and yep. getting points by the Dolphins' offense. Here, here's the information. Last home victory against the Jets. I know this must have came from Squatch because I know Leon couldn't figure that out in, in this amount of time. Well, Logan's back well, there, too. Oh, Logan's got yeah. yeah. so the, the brain. We the, got the, the, the brain whole, trust back. Well, Hey, is Jeff back there? Jeff's as well? back there too. Okay. So Jeff got Jeff got. He, I'm sure he came up with. He's quicker on the quicker on the trigger with that uh, the internet than everyone else back there. Last home victory against the Jets, September 23rd, 2012. Wow. I didn't realize that, man. That, 
<laughs> that's a long time. That's a shocker. Well, it's, it's due then. They're yes. due right now. So uh, we'll see if they can get the job done uh, against this. But, uh, John, the other thing I want to talk a little bit about is just just this football team and, and the confidence they've got to have right now. You know, I talked to Andre Branch after the game, talked to Bushrod after the game, uh, and obviously Tannehill and, uh, and Cam Wake and the guys that come to the podium. Uh, and, and they're all confident uh, where they're at right now. But i got to feel that that whole locker room, from where they were three weeks ago to where they stand right now, the difference in the level of confidence then to now has to be through the roof. A lot of the guys we spoke with today in the locker room said, remember a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about, hey, it's a long season. Yep. Let's, you know, let's not get into that. You know, the season is over at one and four. Well, if you take a look at the past history of the Miami Dolphins, you might have been easily falling into that group to say, you know what? This isn't going to turn yep. around. But this team took it upon themselves to turn it around. I think it's execution. Yep. I think it's a, it's a new voice in the locker room. I, I think the guys relate well and respond well to Adam Gase and this coaching staff. Yep. And I think it's better execution by each individual player, no matter if the starter's in there or the backup's in there. We've seen that on a number of occasions. You take the tight end spot. You take the complimentary running when yep. Jay's going out of the football game. You take you know the <laughs> linebacker spot that's been injured. You, know, you, you, you get a motivated Mario Williams to yep. play. You get more snaps for Cam. Cameron Wake, who's looking like he's ne hasn't had an Achilles injury, yeah. you know. So a lot of things play into that, but I think it's raising the level of each individual and playing with better execution on both sides. Yeah, lost in the conversation of, of what, ha what, ha what happened yesterday too was the fact that look, your your Deion Sims is down. You're down to your 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 third and fourth team right. tight ends, and they, they may not have produced from a pass catching standpoint. And Sam Young, they brought him in to play a three to help a, out. a three tight situation. They were able to get the job done, and you're playing for the first time without Rashad Jones back there. That's Certainly right. your best defensive player, and has been for the last couple of years in this football team. He was gone, and I don't want to say any, nobody missed him because you're always going to miss a guy like that. Uh, but Michael Thomas, I say, uh, I saw Abdul Kadus. You know, they they did their job back there. And no they, one even you know, said Tony Lippett's name. All no, day. no, that's no. That's a good thing. Yeah. Lippett made a great play down there and uh, towards right. the end zone. Made some that's good right. stuff happen down there. So it's funny you look at Tony Lippett now. They're throwing away from him. Yeah. They're, they're <laughs> going the other, they're going the other way. So and it'll be interesting too because now you know now with this bye week. In the situation, you know, Chris Culliver is going to get more time right. to, to practice out there. Uh, Benet Ben Wickery is going to get more right. of an opportunity. Uh, we already saw uh, Chiqua was out there That's yesterday. Right. He was on the field yesterday playing on special teams. So, you know, when we come back in, in a couple weeks, that whole secondary may look a little bit different to you. I wouldn't be surprised if Culliver it gets up to speed that you don't see him playing a, a lot of the cornerback position out there during the course of, of the game against the Jets. I think that's that's something that time will tell, but I yeah. uh, I would, I would certainly say that that's in their wheelhouse to try to see what's happening there. And those guys only allow the special teams to be better. Yes. Because yeah. it all filters down. When you have injuries to starters, those backups have to play more snaps on defense or on offense. And then you're down to bare minimums on special teams. So I think those guys being able to play just like the – uh, defensive tackle and defensive end rotation yep. has been really good on yep. the, on that side of the football for the Miami Dolphins. I, I think that will ultimately help this entire roster. Uh, Gr Gradia Fetisola, sorry about that, man. It's the best I can do. How can the receivers eliminate all those critical drive-killing drops? Uh, I don't know if we've yeah, had all, all that many well, critical I think you, drops. I think, you, you, I think you, have the, you have the Kenny Stills down the well, sideline. that line. was underthrown. It was underthrown, but look, underthrown. But you know, at some point, well, you look, you look at he, the Bills he, he certainly had the chance to turn around and go up in the air for the ball. You look at the Bills execute on on the deep pass, the yeah. sixty six yarder. That ball's on the money. It's an easy six points. Yes. That ball's on the money. That's an easy six yeah, points no for doubt. the Miami Dolphins. Now, you know, you can go back and look at. at at receivers that the Dolphins have had in the past that don't go up and attack yeah. the football. That one could have been idled down and challenged yeah. for the football a little bit more. But to, to that point, I would think if you would ask Ryan Tannehill, he'd say, you know what, that's on me. No, yeah. i got to put yeah. that out there for him to yeah. go get. Yeah, and, but I'm with you. The, the, as far as drop balls yesterday, I don't, I don't think that was a – I don't think you know, there was much the of an one issue drop, out there. The one drop that really I thought was going to hurt was the Adrian Fo or the Arian yes, Foster yes, drop. Yes, exactly. Now, Third I, down. I agree with that yeah. one. That's one that maybe – not being 100%, not getting a lot of practice yep. time, and that ball kind of beat him up. It got yep. on him quickly. Yep. So, you know, that that was the critical one if, if you're talking about drops that I remember. Yep. Hey, Bo, did the alumni enjoy the victory yesterday? The alumni, they enjoyed the whole weekend, I guarantee you that. Uh, but but you know what? If, you, if you're an alumni and you come back, and we had guys – uh, I saw Norm Bulosh out mm -hmm. there. I saw guys from you know that that came back from a long distance to come out here uh, and and uh, and be part of this alumni weekend out there. And I guarantee you, they love coming back. But they love coming back and seeing a win, especially a win like that. 
You know, when you watch a team go out there and physically beat up a Buffalo Bills team that, you know, all these guys played against the Bills that's when right. they were with the Dolphins, so they know what that's all about. To be able to come back and see that in that – and I tell you what, a lot of guys I talked to that hadn't been here before, man, they they they, they looked around that stadium and they just couldn't went, believe wow, it. this is yeah, unbelievable. Cool. unbelievable. You know, it, it was great talking with Nat Moore just uh, at the end of the game. He said, you know what's going to make this alumni weekend the best is if we win. Yeah. You know, and everybody will go home happy. The fans, yeah. the alumni that came all that way. Uh, so when you're winning, you know, it, it's kind of breeds that excitement throughout yeah. the whole organization. Yeah, no doubt. It was great to see those guys around. And the, and uh, look, the team did a great job. Nat Moore did a great job. And so thanks to you guys. Uh, everybody enjoyed the weekend, no doubt. Uh, please speak on how our upcoming schedule is favorable to good, gain ground in the AFC hunt. We were just talking about yes. that off the air. First of all, you got the Jets coming back. If you can beat the Jets, you leave after this homestand at 4-4. Four and four, You go out to play a San Diego team that won last night. Uh, one last, one last night, but a losing record. And then you go against a Rams team out there that's trying to find their way. Then you come back, you've got a Baltimore team that you've got to play that they're struggling to, to win Fran. games. San Francisco struggling to win games. So I, so there's a lot of opportunity out there, but look, let's not get ahead of ourselves. You know, this is a football team right now that's three and four. You know, we're not four and two. We're not four and three. This is a football team that's still trying to get to 500. Two great games, but they've got to continue. They can't ride on the, you know, they can't try to ride on the success of the past two weeks. They've got to go and continue. And hopefully, John, they, they've they've learned that hey, if if we want to be successful, if we want to be, you know, if we want to be happy in the locker room after the after the games, you got to go out and you got to play hard. And, and and hopefully that, if nothing else, has been infused into their brain stems over what they've been able to accomplish. I think it is. I think that's the one thing you don't have to worry about about this football team. When they were 1-4, and four, when they were 1-3, and three, this football team talked about, hey, we got to worry about this week, about forgetting about that last game and winning this game. Yeah. And I think they are taking it one week at a time. It's, a, it's an old cliche, but this team... That's the only way they can they can control their destiny yeah. is being able to concentrate on the New York Jets and then move on to the next one after it, not before it. Yeah. And because they're not they're not talented enough to do that. Yeah. Some teams maybe are if you take a look around the league, but there's a lot of teams uh, in the AFC especially that are around three and four, four and three. So that one carry game or that one swing game yeah. down the stretch can mean a lot. So you have to take care of business each and every week. Yep. Yeah. Uh, did you see any alumni that you hadn't seen in a while? Yeah, I talked about Norm Bulosh. I hadn't seen him in years. Uh, there was a lot of guys out there. Charlie Babb was out there. I hadn't seen William Judson who played against. Uh, a, a lot of guys I saw out there that we hadn't seen in a long time. And, and it's just, um, you know, it's, it's great to see them. And it's funny. I, I think I told the story. We, we were out in, when we were out in Seattle, uh, they were having an alumni weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, Jack Patera, the first head coach of the, of the Seattle Seahawks, they were, uh, they were honoring him. And so they had all the, all the years that he coached there. And so one of the guys there was uh, it played with me with the Dolphins, a guy named Carl Barisic out of Princeton, played with us for a while. And uh, a bad body, uh, bad body Barisic, we used to call him because he had skinny <laughs> legs, had a pot belly, but every time the guy got in the game, he, he made plays. plays. So anyway, so I saw him, and he was at the uh, he was at the festivities for for the Seahawks at the game because he had played for the Seahawks before us. So I caught up with him after. I said, "Hey, man, did you have a good time?" He goes, "Yeah, I had a good time, but I had to tell Coach Patero and everyone." So I said, "Look, I may be here representing the Seattle Seahawks alumni, but I'm a Dolphin all the way." No way, which that's was pretty awesome. much I that's, that's pretty, great. And I think it tells you a lot about what the Dolphin alumni think of the organization uh, and, the and, 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 their, and the way they get treated uh, with the whole thing. All right, uh, is J Train elite? Well, I, for two weeks he's elite as uh, anybody in the national. Nobody's football better league. right They're, now. Nobody's better right now. Uh, I think that you know what I don't. I wouldn't say he's elite as a football player. I don't think he would say that. He's a no. hard worker and he has to play that style of football yep. to have success. But w as a complimentary guy, the way the lines playing, he's been as elite he, look, as it he, as it comes he, over the last he, two he weeks. He doesn't have to be a two hundred yard rusher every game. But, you know, look, he can go out and have a game where he rushes for 60 or 75 He'll yards still be and still be effective if he forces the defense to play. You know, That's right. like I've always said before, you know, it, it may, it, if you're going to be a good offensive football team, you don't have to run the ball 25 or 30 times a game. But that defense certainly better respect the fact that you can run the football, run the ball successfully uh, if you want to be good at it. And, and I think, you know, if he has a few more games where he continues to run hard and this becomes a consistent type of a, a play, and I'm not talking about the 200 yards, no. just the way his attitude and the way he's going about it, then I think, yeah, then I think you've got to respect this team as a football team and him as a running back that you have to know where he's at all the time. And everyone starts creeping a little closer to the line of scrimmage and opens a lot of things over the top for you. When you can run the football, 
football <laughs> as hard and as effective as he has over the last two weeks, yep. and you have an average of well over five or six yards yep. per carry, that puts enormous pressure on a defense. And it allows your quarterback, Ryan Tannehill, allows your passing game and your playmakers to be more involved. And like you said, you don't have to throw it 35, 40 times. Yep. You have great balance. You control the time of possession. You score points, and especially in the red zone, this is a team that has to score touchdowns. They can't settle for field goals. But if they can do those things, boy, they're going to put a lot of pressure on opposing defenses. Yeah, no doubt about it. John, always it's been a pleasure with you, Thanks, man. Thanks, Bo. Always a pleasure having you come in. It was uh, uh, certainly a great weekend for the Miami Dolphins, great weekend for the alumni. I hope the fans out there that went to the game enjoyed the whole alumni thing at, at halftime. I know we certainly did. And no doubt it was a, it maybe a, a, one of the great weekends uh, ending with a Miami Dolphins win over the Buffalo Bills in a fashion that I don't think any one of us really uh, expected or, or could have imagined that it was going to go the way it did. Get behind, come back, grind it out, be patient, run the ball down their throats, get the big bomb at the end of the game to put you over the top. That's the way it's supposed to be played, and that's the way it's done here on the Audible. We'll catch you next time. Are you going to tell Leon we're off? Oh, come on. <laughs>